Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the romantic operetta, Naughty Marietta based on the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer motion picture with Victor Herbert's beloved music, and starring Jeanette McDonald and your host, Gordon McRae. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Gordon McRae, bringing up the curtain on one of Victor Herbert's most melodic and popular operettas, Naughty Marietta. <laughs> In the character of Captain Dick Warrington, I meet and fall in love with Naughty Marietta in New Orleans, when Louisiana was still under the rule of Louis XV of France. Ah, but the story of Marietta begins much before that, and no one is more familiar with it than that lady herself. So may I introduce her to you in the person of our lovely and charming guest star this evening, known and loved by all as the Naughty Marietta of the screen, Miss Jeanette MacDonald. that melody one night in a dream and lived with the memory of it ever after. I remembered only the beginning of that unexplained song and somehow I felt that if, if I could complete it I could find the answer not only to the mystery of life but, but to the mystery of my own unhappiness as well. It was spring in the court at Versailles and my royal uncle had informed me that the King of France had commanded that I marry a fat, elderly member of the Royal House of Spain named Don Carlos. The thought was intolerable to me, so I arranged to take the place of one of the maids in the castle, a Marietta Franini, on a bride ship bound for New Orleans. And that very night I stole away from the castle and set sail on the adventure of my life. Oh, Marietta, isn't the sea beautiful? I wish we weren't landing tomorrow. Why, Julie, I thought you were looking forward to this brand new world and the fine, handsome young, young cavalier who would, who would claim you as his wife. Well, suppose it isn't a fine, handsome cavalier. Suppose it's a fat, ugly one. Well, you don't have to accept him. You'll have the pick of all the men in New Orleans. What kind of a husband do you want, Marietta? Oh, oh uh, I don't intend to marry. <laughs> oh, but you have to. You accepted the king's dowry. A casket of gold and a grant of land to each girl who will go to the colonies and marry. Well, the king can keep his grant and his casket. Then why did you come on the bride ship? Oh, for many reasons, but mainly because of a song. A song? Yes, a melody that's become a sort of challenge to me. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, Marietta. Oh, please finish it. Oh, I can't, Julie. Perhaps I never will be able to finish it. Well, when you sing, it makes me forget how frightened I am, Marietta. Well, then I'm afraid it'll have to be another song, Julie. Well, there's a little prayer I learned as a child. Will that do? Oh, yes, yes. All right, then. One song for one smile. Is that a bargain? Oh, yes, Marietta. King of the earth and sky and sea Guide us upon us We place our trust in thee day by day. in heaven, forever with thee. 
Thank you, Marietta. I feel ever so much better now. For your stations, men. There's a pirate ship approaching from starboard. Oh, pirates! 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 Straight across the stand. Return fire. All right, my little pigeon, stop that sniffling. You've been captured by pirates. You might as well make the best of it. I will camp here on the shore for the night. In the morning, we'll figure out what's to be done about you. In the name of the King of France, I demand that you set us free. Well, do you now, my pretty? Now, don't you dare come a step closer to me. <laughs> I like redhead. The more peppery they are, the better I like them. Why, you... <laughs> Well, I'll have a kiss for that slap, my lady. What's that? That's the song of the governor's men, Captain. They must be looking for some word of the bride ship. Captain Dick Warrington's men, huh? Well, no point in fighting two battles today unless we have to. John, out of that campfire. Yes, sir. All right, now you women get down in your faces and keep quiet. Ah, oh, good. Good, they're passing by. Help! Help! Soldiers, help! Pilot! Help! Come on, men. We found them. Oh, Captain Warrington, I, I... I certainly want to thank you, your men... Careful. For... You're tipping the canoe. If you hadn't come along just when you did, I, I don't know what might have happened to us. Well, that's what the governor of Louisiana pays us for. Personally, I never approved of you women being shipped over here in the first place. The minute women arrive any place, there's trouble. Why, look at my men. Even in the moonlight, you can see the silly expressions on their faces. They're not used to having women in their canoes. Mm, judging from your manners, I, I wouldn't say you were either. Huh? Well, my manners were all right when I was saving your life. Hmm, didn't you say you get paid for that sort of thing? Hmm. Well, I'll wager my next month's salary that you weren't any poor little milkmaid on a farm. Oh, would you? You don't have the manner born, my lady. Whoever your mistress was, she taught you to put on too many airs. Blue eyes. My eyes are green. And my name is Marietta. Nevertheless, I'll call you Blue Eyes. <laughs> so you had to come all the way to New Orleans to catch a husband, eh? Well, don't look at me. Hmm. You fancy yourself quite a lady killer, don't you? Oh, I am. I am. I don't know whether it's my looks or my voice. By the way, what did you think of my voice, Blue Eyes? When I heard it, uh, my mind wasn't exactly on musical matters, Captain Warrington. Hmm, that's right. Too bad. It's a nice voice. Care to hear it again? No, thank you. Might spoil the effect of that lovely moon up there. Oh, on the contrary, it'll help it. Why, I'll sing you a song about our southern moon if you like. Fine. I'm a little bit tired anyway, so if you don't mind, I'll just take a little nap while you're singing. <laughs> Careful. You might find yourself dreaming about me. Neath the southern moon, for oh love so warm and tender, by the southern sea, for oh love so warm. Breathe their languor on the air 
There now. Did you ever hear anything prettier? Hey, blue eyes. What are you dreaming about, your future husband? That, Captain Warrington, was the furthest thing from my mind. Captain, there are the lights of New Orleans up ahead. New Orleans? New Orleans, that's right, blue eyes. With your new husband waiting for you on the dock. Come on, men. Let's give them our song and have the whole town turn out to greet us. Let's see that these ladies get a rousing welcome from New Orleans. Tramp, tramp, tramp along the highway. Tramp, 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 the road is free. Blazing trails along the byway. Will you devour our we? Tramp, 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 now clear the roadway. Room, 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 the world is free. With planters and Canucks, Virginians and Kentucks, Captain Dixon Infantry, Captain Dixon Infantry. Tramp, tramp along the highway, tramp, 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 the road is free. Blazing trails along the byway, where are we? Tramp, 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 now clear the roadway. Room, 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 the world is free. With planters and canucks, with onions and canucks, Captain Dick's own infantry. Captain Dick's own infantry. You came here to get married. You signed the agreement. But, mademoiselle, you must marry someone. It is the law. It says in your credentials. No, no, no. I don't want to marry anyone. Here, here, here. What's the meaning of this, young woman? I'm told you are refusing to marry. Very true, monsieur. And uh, who are you? I am the governor of Louisiana. Oh, well, then will you please tell these gentlemen that I don't have to marry them? Oh, but you do, mademoiselle. It says in your credentials... Then I shall tear up my credentials. (laughs) Stop, stop that immediately. Young woman, what is your name? Marietta Franini. Well, Marietta Franini, something has to be done about you. Yes, Your Excellency. I don't want to have to put you in jail. Governor, Governor. Uh, Hmm? Oh, Captain Warrington. Dick, my dear boy. I uh, couldn't help hearing your conversation with this young woman. I, I feel a sort of responsibility for her myself. After all, it's my fault in a way that she's here, and I'm willing that you put her in my custody for the time being. I'll see that she has lodgings. Well, an excellent suggestion, Dick. And if she doesn't get some sense in her head, we'll just have to ship her home to France. Come along, Blue Eyes. Where are you taking me? You are now about to enter one of the main thoroughfares of New Orleans. Charming, isn't it? What brought about this sudden interest in my future, Captain Warrington? Well, I feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for me? Yes. You're so beautiful and so dumb. Oh, am I? Well, let me tell you something. You may not be as smart as you think you are, and I may not be as dumb as I look. Well, I mean, as uh, you think I look. Now, kindly conduct me to uh, to wherever I'm supposed to find residence, and then... Then I'll say au revoir. Not au revoir, Captain Warrington. Just say a lasting goodbye. Well, look ahead there. My friend Rudolfo, who runs the marionette theater. Hey, Rudolfo! Rudolfo! Come! Hello, Dick. Hello, my friend. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Rodolfo. Say, where's that plump daughter of yours? The one who's singing? Yeah. She got married. But Monsieur, my Suzette, she sings it too. Come with Suzette, sing it for the gentlemen. Well, it seems like everybody's getting married this day. Must be the season. Perhaps. Ah, nice voice. Hasn't she a little ice lady? Too bad you can't sing. Really? Yes, it gives a woman out a charm. You might take some lessons, but of course, I'd never expect you to sing as well as Suzette. Well, that, monsieur, it's a matter of opinion. The mandolina sings sweet, the turtle falls, oh, do me indeed. Oh, could I return, oh, joy complete. Thank <laughs> you. 
the cookie, the mademoiselle, you voice is beautiful. Oh, thank you, Rodolfo. Oh, if a, such a singer would only come to me, it would mean a new days for my marionette theater. This lady is a prisoner, Rodolfo, and she isn't interested in helping you or anyone. Oh, but that isn't true. Rodolfo, the governor has placed me in this gentleman's custody. But if he'll permit me, I- I'd be very happy to sing at your theater. Oh, gracias, gracias. You will see that she has lodgings and take good care of it? I will, I will. Hey, there's your man, the Captain Dick. Are you coming, Captain? I'll be right there. Well, farewell, my lady. Oh, no. No, please wait. What? <laughs> you realize what you're saying? Oh, I- I- I'm sorry. For a moment, I... Well, it was when you turned away from me... That moment, I, I thought I heard... Come on, Vic. Tramp, Take good care of her, Rodolfo. Goodbye, Mamsel. Tramp, 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 the road is free. Did you say au revoir? Yes, I did. Then, au revoir it is. Tramp, 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 the road is free. It's interesting to think of the way people lived in America in the time of naughty Marietta. Here was this vast continent with every natural resource it has today, and yet it could barely support two or three million persons. Now, a nation of nearly 150 million persons living on the same area produces not only enough for its own needs, but enough to aid half the world besides. What makes the difference? Well, for one thing, there was born in this land a new sort of freedom. It was not merely political freedom, but was the freedom of every man to use his native ability to make the most of every opportunity to better himself. Without that sort of freedom, political freedom could not long be maintained. And in that atmosphere of freedom, there blossomed mighty inventions, creating the machinery which multiplies many-fold man's power of production. And there developed a new sort of transportation, continent-wide transportation, binding the nation into a unit Low-cost, dependable transportation, which makes high-volume production possible, and also makes possible the widespread distribution and high-level consumption, without which large-scale production would be useless. This essential transportation is performed on the railroads, in trains of cars, on tracks. These railroads handle goods on a scale undreamed of elsewhere, and they do it at rates which, in comparison with prices and wages, are lower than anywhere else in the world. And they are lower now in comparison than they were before the war, even here in America. And so it is that a continent which could barely support a mere handful of people has become the home of nearly 150 million who produce more and live better than any other people on the face of the earth. Now back to Naughty Marietta with your host, Gordon McRae, and Jeanette McDonald as his guest star. One fleeting moment, I had felt as though I knew what my dream melody meant to say. That moment when Dick Warrington smiled at me and said goodbye. And yet I I considered Dick an arrogant, conceited, egotistical, impossible boor. I thought it was because he was the only man I knew in New Orleans that, that I was glad to see him when he arrived at the puppet show the next night. Good show, Blue Eyes. Say, you can sing. Thank you. Come on, let's take a walk in the moonlight. I want to talk to you. Haven't you anything better to do? Well, if I had, I'd be doing it. Here, put this cape around you. But it's warm out. Put the hood up over your hair. Why? Well, let's just say it's too hot to look at red hair. Now, if you're going to be insulting, I'm not going with you. Oh, yes, you are. You're coming with me? 
and you're going to ride in my canoe out along the edges of the bayou, completely out of earshot of anyone on land. And then you're going to tell me why the governor has today offered a reward of 250,000 louis for the apprehension of one Marietta Fanini. 250,000 louis for me? The governor sent for me this morning and asked me if I knew where you were. I told him you had gotten away from me. Well, did he tell you why, why they sent for no, me? No, but you're going to tell me as soon as we get in that boat. Well, will it be safe to talk there? Yes. My men are all through the bayou right now. It's the safest place in New Orleans for the moment. And this is the most dangerous. Now, come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you, you know, I've, I've never given an order to a woman before. <laughs> now, I've never taken an order from a man. Well, let's talk that over when we have time, Marietta. Yes, when we have time, Dick. You, you do trust me now, don't you? Well, if I can't trust you, then, then I have no one. Come on. Oh, sweet mystery of life, could I but find thee. The words repeated themselves within me urgently over and over as I followed Dick through the streets of New Orleans. And when he helped me into the boat and we drifted out, out on the moonlit water, it fairly thundered in my ears. what the rest of the song was or, or what it meant uh, I still didn't know now tell me blue eyes why should they offer a reward of 250,000 louis for a giddy little redhead from Marseille oh please let's let's not talk about it now all this will end soon enough blue eyes you're in trouble I want to help you the governor has all the troops in New Orleans out hunting for you what did you do I ran away Away from a man I didn't want to marry. Who are you? Oh, just someone. Someone, huh? Mm, someone from somewhere. Well, you know, I have a very strange feeling about someone. No pain, I hope. No. I have a very strange feeling I, I never felt before. Mm, you're coming down with something all right. <laughs> a kind of a grind of depression. I wonder if it's catching. I hope so. My heart's acting strangely at feels rather sore. At least it gives me that impression. My pulses leap madly without any cause. Believe me, I'm telling you truly. I'm gay without pause. Then sad without cause. My spirit did love you? Oh, Marietta. I said it. Would you care what her past had been? Would you marry her with, without questions? If, if you say you love me, that's the only question I would ask. And the only answer I am interested in. Oh, I know now. I know now what it means. Warren, 
Major. Yes, Major. Bring that boat into shore. My men will fire on you if you don't. Oh, please, Dick. Do as he asks. But Marietta. Oh, please. All right, Marietta. Whatever you say. Captain Warrington, I have a warrant for this lady. She's to be returned to the palace of the governor at once. Why? What has she done? It isn't what she's done. It's who she is. She is the Princess Marie d'Altena, a fugitive from France against His Majesty's wishes. Princess? You, you a princess, Marietta? Yes, Dick. I hoped you'd never know. Permit me to help you from the boat, Your Highness. Thank you. The governor awaits you at his palace. If you don't wish to go, Blue Eyes, I have a sword here that will see that you stay. Men, advance and fall to... Oh, no, no, please, please. I have men of my own in this bayou. I have only to call out and they will be at your service. No, I've put you in enough danger already. I'll go with you, Major. Shall I... Shall I see you again, Captain Warrington? There is only one answer to that, which I believe you know. Company, march! Come in. Good evening, Your Highness. How charming you look. All dressed for the ball in your honor, I see. Well, I'm afraid the last thing I want is to be presented to New Orleans society, Governor. His Majesty is most provoked with you, Your Highness. As a matter of fact, another order just arrived, which I should like to read to you. <clears throat> and she shall be found and returned immediately under the custody of her uncle on his arrival. Anyone aiding or abetting her further escape shall be considered in treason to me and shall be given the extreme penalty. Signed... Louis XV. How would you like to marry an old, fat Spanish don that, that creaks every time he walks? I should be honored. Well, then you marry him. Oh, no, 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 my dear. Oh, I, I could hardly, I hardly do that. We'd better go down to the ball. You take my arm, princess? Thank you. Oh, uh, <clears throat> princess... I thought you might be interested to know that I have ordered Captain Warrington and his men to start for Barataria today. He's a good soldier, and I should not like to be forced to carry out His Majesty's orders. But if he should attempt to help you escape... I understand, Governor. What's that singing? Oh, oh Governor, I promise you I won't cause you any trouble. Oh, only please don't let anyone else suffer. For... I'll return to Versailles. Very well. That, of course, makes my position much easier. Your ship sails at dawn. I shall be aboard. I... I had... I had known the secret, the answer to the mystery of my life and of my song for almost a full day. But as I walked down and took my place in the ballroom, I realized that... But to know the song and its meaning, and, and to deny that meaning was almost unbearable. And yet it, it had to be denied forever. And then, late in the evening, I went out into the garden for a moment, and suddenly, there he was before me. Your Highness. Oh, Dick. Dick, you must go at once. You're in great danger here. Oh, danger? Do you think I'm afraid of danger? Oh, but I, I, I can't really talk to you tonight with all these people here. The moment they find I'm gone, they'll, they'll be searching for me. Out on the bayou, you started to sing a song for me. I'd like to hear it now. Oh, please, this, this, this ball is in honor of my sailing. I should be back there. Sailing? You know, I... What have they said about sailing? Oh, the sailing? Yes. Oh. When are they going to try to take you away? Oh, uh, the, the, the day after tomorrow. I mean, I mean the day after that. Friday, I think. Friday? Then I'll be back to hear your song right here tomorrow night. We'll be camped only about 20 miles from here. Captain Warrington! Governor! Well... Good evening, Your Excellency. Didn't you receive my orders? Oh, yes, of course he did. Oh, don't magnify something very silly, Governor. This uh, this uh, officer saved my life, and I asked him to come here to say goodbye. Uh, thank you again, Captain, and goodbye. Princess? Good night. Good night. Your Highness, everyone is pleading for you to sing for them. Would you do it? Would you honor us? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I will sing for you. I knew I'd never see Dick again, and I had to let him hear my song. I went into the ballroom and, and saw Dick at the head of the stairway, just about to leave, so... So I sang my song straight to him. Oh, sweet mystery of life, 
A few minutes ago, we were talking about what freedom and invention and transportation have done in this country in making the way we live in America the marvel of the world. Let's pay a little more attention to the third of these mighty forces, transportation, and especially the backbone of our transportation system, our railroads. Production as we know it would not be possible without railroads to assemble the materials used the fertilizers and farm implements, for example, for the kind of agriculture which is practiced in America, or the raw materials, the fuel, and the machinery used in industry. And not only would production on the American scale be impossible without railroads, it would also be useless without the widespread distribution and the high consumption of goods which railroad transportation makes possible. America finds use for other forms of transportation, but no one of them, nor all of them together, could take the place of railroads in furnishing the low-cost, continental-wide, all-season service, which is fundamental to the way we make things and the way we use them here in America. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Now, 
now back to Act Three of Naughty Marietta with your host, Gordon McRae, and his guest star, Jeanette McDonald. And now I had sung my dream melody, and I pledged my love with it, and at the same time said farewell to that love forever. I ran upstairs after I finished singing and stood at the window listening to his men march through the empty, moonlit streets. And I stood there thinking, he is with them. And they are marching away from me. Yes? I just wanted to say good night, Princess. I hope you'll be quite comfortable. Well, it doesn't matter now, Governor. Nothing matters. I'm going back to marry Don Carlos as the king commanded. Sometimes it's very sad to be of royal blood, Princess. But life establishes the rules of our conduct by how we are born. And we must obey those rules. Well, I thought, I hoped this was a new country where all those out-of-date precepts could be forgotten. It's too bad, Princess, that we cannot make of the world what we dream it should be. Good night. Oh, Dick. Dick. Did you call me, Blue Eyes? Oh, Dick. Oh, why did you come back? I came for you. You wouldn't have sung that song to me if you'd ever expected to see me again, would you? No. When are you really sailing? At dawn. Why didn't you tell me? Well, if you'd known, you you never would have gone, and and I'd have seen them lead you away to be... What have I to live for without you? Oh, what are we to do? Get a cloak. My men are waiting at the edge of town. Now hurry. Oh, but we can't. The palace is surrounded. I got in. I'll get out. But, Dick, wherever we'd go, they'd only find us again. Oh, not where we're going. We're heading west, Blue Eyes, into a new country, a new life, together. Will you come with me? Of course I will. Then quick, hurry now. Princess! Princess! Quick, out on the balcony, hurry! Guard! Call the guard! Something's wrong! Warn the guard! First, I'll jump over the balcony. Are you all right? Yes. Now jump. I'll catch you. There you are. Off where you are. Up with your hand. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Hold those two. We have them, Governor. Bring them to my room. Don't let them escape. They won't escape from us, Your Excellency. Good. Well, shall we march, gentlemen? Oh, Dick, I knew it would all be for nothing. We, uh, we know quite a long way to the Governor's office, Captain. Yes, sir, through the woods. Kind of pretty. Uh Uh-huh. Now you follow us, right out through the castle gates. Dick! We're not safe yet. But these soldiers, they're your men. Of course. Oh, oh, my darling. How on earth did you manage that? Easily. They changed places with some of the palace guards, who were very glad to get a night off. The horses are just ahead. The men are waiting. Well, here we are, Your Highness. No more, Your Highness. From this moment, there are no titles left in the world. Oh, yes, there are. Your new one. What's that? Why, Mrs. Warrington, naturally. Here, let me help you up. We have a long ride ahead of us, but there's a ship waiting... And a whole new country. And a new life. Oh, sweet mystery of life, at last I found thee. Oh, at last I know the secret of it all. Oh, the longing, seeking, striving, waiting Ladies and gentlemen, Jeanette McDonald will be back in just a moment. 
Meanwhile, this is your host, Gordon McRae, giving a big vote of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Earl Ross, Alan Reed, Sheila Stevens, Paul Fries, Polly Bear, and Bill Demling for their fine performances in Naughty Marietta with book and lyrics by Rita Johnson Young. Music by Victor Herbert and adapted for radio by Gene Holloway. And now, here's Jeanette MacDonald again. I just want to say how greatly I enjoyed appearing for the Association of American Railroads in this production of Naughty Marietta, one of my favorite roles. <laughs> we were honored to have you, Jeanette, and very happy, too, that you are to join us again very soon. Oh, yes, the week after next, as a matter of fact, in another of my favorites, Noel Coward's Bittersweet. And I'm certain that your fans will all be listening. Oh, by the way, what are you doing next week? Well, next week, the Metropolitan Opera Soprano, Miss Patrice Munzel, and Mr. Kenny Baker will join me in presenting one of America's most beloved operettas, Blossom Time. Oh, I'll certainly be listening to that myself. And I'll see you all again week after next in Bittersweet. Au revoir, Marietta. Au revoir, Captain Dick. <laughs> all aboard. Well, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Naughty Marietta has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Jeanette McDonald's new motion picture is The Sun Comes Up, produced by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, whose current hit is Words and Music. Gordon McRae appeared on this program by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.